Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Eat and Like It. My name is Jesse Blanco, host of this television program, as I have been for many, many years. We appreciate you taking some time out of your weekend to hang out with us here early June, summer of 2024. It's already getting powerful warm out there. And as evidenced by what is over my shoulder, we have new content and an episode, frankly, that I'm very, very excited to uh, to bring you. It's a, it's a, a journey two years in the making Two trips to Greece, book ended with one that I took a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, you know, it's time to share all of this stuff that I've collected over the years. We have a ton of food, fun, and all kinds of craziness going on in uh, in this episode. It's going to start with a press tour of the entire country of Greece that I took a couple of years ago, uh, learning about feta cheese. And if you're interested in feta cheese and what makes it real or not, Stick around. We have something, uh, a little bit of that. There's some sightseeing. There's some shopping. There's a little bit of history thrown in. And there's also uh, a little bit of information about a young lady I met who uh, who I will consider from this point forward a friend for life. I'll tell you about Stammy Turner. Stammy Turner. I'll tell you about Stammy Turner at the end of, uh, of the episode. She is uh, She's pretty amazing. Like I said, there's lots and lots of food. In this episode, there might be a couple of recipes that you can jot down. There is a, there's a local angle for uh, for Greek food here in uh, in Savannah. We chat with a friend of mine who is a, a Greek slash Mediterranean caterer. Uh, if you uh, if you get so inclined and you want some of these eats after you see them in the next half hour, and then at the end of the show, I'm going to give you a couple of resources for your uh, next trip to Greece, which I highly recommend. And the next 30 minutes, I think, will prove that. We're going to take a quick break, quick break before we do. That weekly reminder, sign up for that newsletter. <laughs> you can do so right now at eatandalikeit.com. Once a week to your inbox, we do nothing nefarious with your personal information, just one email with all the news that is fit to eat. All right, we're going to get out of here when we come back. We're going to Greece. Stay with us, everybody. If you didn't like it, we'll be right back. Greece is everything you would expect it to be. Old? Sure. I mean, really? The signs of just how far back everything goes here are absolutely everywhere. In Athens... We all know about the Acropolis. What you may not know is that just across the way from this centerpiece in Athens is the hill where it is believed democracy was born. On this hill, speakers would gather and address the masses. Then votes would be taken on what direction the ancient city of Athens would go in. The unruly were held back and kept in order by archers. Not two miles away from there is their Olympic Stadium. The grounds are ancient Track and field events were held here thousands of years ago. Only men, however, were allowed to participate, and they did so in the nude. It's now open for runners every single morning. One lap is about a tenth of a mile and called a stad, clearly a precursor to the word stadium. Speaking of which, this stadium was restored for the 1896 Olympic Games. Every seat you see here is marble, every step, every wall, all of it, marble. 1896 is considered the birth date of the modern Olympic Games, which were held here. But you didn't come here for history lessons, right? Trust me, there are plenty and they are incredibly fascinating. We're here to eat. All of it. And I did. It was the trip of a lifetime to that point for me. A nine-hour flight from New York City to Athens later and I was as wide-eyed as a six-year-old looking to take it all in. Except that trip didn't take me to Athens. I took that by myself. More on that later. Instead, our tour of Greece began in Thessaloniki, in the northern part of the country. Once we landed there, as if the trip wasn't long enough, there was a three-hour bus ride waiting for us to the small waterfront town of Volos. The resort was beautiful. And we were all excited to get there and get out of these clothes we'd been traveling in for a day and a half and get comfortable. That is, except me. The airline lost my bag. We were three hours away from a major airport, and I kind of knew it would be a while. By the way, keep an eye on that purple shirt. Still, how could I not be excited? I was. It was my first visit to Greece, 
and I frankly had no idea what to expect. I'd been included on a press tour of the country, practically the entire thing. Journalists and chefs from across America were on that trip, including celebrity chef Gernard Wells and Beard Award-winning cookbook author and chef Virginia Willis. At the heart of the matter was feta cheese. Over the course of four days, we were taken to three different feta manufacturing plants. I mean, we're talking soup to nuts. If you aren't familiar, feta is a sheep's milk cheese manufactured in a certain style. As you might expect, within that niche, you can get all kinds of different feta cheeses. Of course you can. But the reason why we were brought here was to see how it is made, and most importantly, to spread the word about Greece's feta PDO. A PDO is a protected designation of origin. In 2002, the European Union recognized sections of Greece, not the entire country, mind you, as a feta PDO. Just like you can't call it champagne, unless it comes from a particular region in France. And much closer here to home, you cannot call them Vidalia onions, unless they come from a particular seven county section of South Central Georgia. True story. Well, the message for us and their biggest frustration for these manufacturers is that they're competing, particularly in American markets, with products that aren't feta passing themselves off as feta. In the United States, most of what you see in the grocery stores is American made with cow's milk. It is not authentic feta and frankly, it's not very good particularly when you compare it with this stuff, the real deal. These manufacturers hate the fact that people in our country see a white block of cheese and say, oh, I love feta, even if what they're eating is nothing at all like feta. There are some places to find it. For example, we were told that these packages were headed for Costco stores here in America. But you know how those big box warehouses stores can be? What's there today may not necessarily be there next week, inconsistent at best. We saw what the sheep were fed. We saw how they were processed for milk. We were educated on how much goat's milk can be included in order to keep a feta designation. 30% by the way. We were told that the grasses that the sheep eat affect the taste of the milk and thus the cheese, which a smaller manufacturer we visited welcomed. The big huge conglomerate, which we visited as well, didn't mind so much. They have the technology to make it all taste the same once it's made into cheese which was kind of not cool, but hey. Obviously, we made it out to eat every day, multiple times a day, where we enjoyed a lot of the cheeses from the manufacturers that we had visited throughout the course of our trip. They were served in salads, they were served alone, some soft and somewhat spreadable, others a little more on the crumbly side. None of it resembling what you will find at the grocery stores here in America. I'd say 95% of what I tried was delicious. That other 5%, my friends loved it, so it was just me, I guess. Beyond the cheese, the grill is at the center of what Greeks enjoy. Grilled meats abound everywhere. There is also an absolute abundance of seafood. Octopus is huge, sardines are very big, of course fish, and you'll find salads everywhere. Of course, here they don't call them Greek salads, they're just salads. But the one thing I saw everywhere were french fries. All the meats are served with them, a dollop of tzatziki, some pita, and you're good to go. A few pounds later, I determined that these fries are actually a clandestine vehicle for some of this amazing tzatziki sauce. So much of it was bright, fresh, and delicious no matter where we were in Greece, and we were everywhere. So we drove up here to where the Grinch lives, ah, and he wasn't here. <laughs> I know, right? Who's gonna go knock on his door? And you guys gonna go knock on his door? The Grinch, is so the Grinch lives up here. Did you catch that purple shirt? Yeah, it was an adventure. Until we got back to the big city of Thessaloniki and my guides took me shopping. Thessaloniki is uh, Greece's second largest city and it looks a lot like uh, any other smallish European city. The architecture is quite beautiful. It, uh, it really is beautiful here. Um, this is one of their main shopping drags which I've done a lot of and not because uh, I'm buying souvenirs, but because the airline lost my, my suitcase. So this week has been uh, quite interesting. Um, you know, chasing little things that you don't realize you're missing until you're missing them. Socks, sunglasses, they were all in my bag. Um, so yeah, it's made, for, uh, it's made for an interesting week, but this has been just uh, a, a fascinating experience so far. 
The one thing that stood out to me here food-wise is that Thessaloniki is in the northwest corner of Greece, about 250 kilometers from Istanbul, Turkey. Not far at all. What I found was that the flavors up here had more of a Middle Eastern spin on them. We had just spent the better part of a week hundreds of miles to the south, and it wasn't until we got back up here to Thessaloniki that I actually had a meal and the differences in them stood out, which I found very interesting. Work portion of the trip done, I was off on my own to the city of Athens. The tour didn't take us there, and there was no way I was going to come all this way and not visit the Acropolis, which I did, and in doing so, found a friend for life. So I was only in Athens for about two and a half days, and in those two and a half days, obviously, I toured the Acropolis. But beyond that, um, I was walking around sightseeing, and I decided to dive into this pub this very pub to use their Wi-Fi and get my bearings on where I was. I didn't have cell service. So you rely on Wi-Fi to, to figure out where you are and which direction you want to walk in and all that. And I'm sitting there and behind me, I hear a conversation. Very literally three voices speaking in English. And I say voices because they were behind me. I didn't see who these people were. Three voices speaking in English. Two were British. One was our English, American English. And at one point I hear one of the, the gentlemen uh, speaking in British, he says, so you say you're from Charleston. Uh, I know there are two Charlestons in America. Which one are you from, West Virginia or South Carolina? And I hear the other, the only American voice say, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Well, I'm sitting there in this pub in Athens, Greece, from here in Savannah, and that got my attention. So I turned around. I'm not shy. And I said, you're from Charleston. I'm from Savannah. Turns out, I meet Stammy Turner. Stammy Turner lives in Athens. She's been there, I think, almost 10 years, and we became fast friends. She offered to take me everywhere all over Athens, and she did. We walked all over central Athens. The food was absolutely incredible. The views, just as much. The history, I mean, my goodness, this art house pub, once upon an ancient time, was a women's prison. What were the cells up there are now artist lofts. She took me to some of the most popular bars in the world. Yes, in the world. She made me look them up. No joke. She took me to some places that I will never forget as long as I live. But my midnight that night, it had been a long day slash week. After dinner, we were eating dinner about 11 o'clock at night. I told her, I said, Stammy, I got to go. But I will be back one day. Um, and I finished my meal. We had seen some dancing and the whole thing. And it was out on a plaza. And I gave her a hug and I thanked her for everything. And I said, I will be back. Stammy's story is actually a fascinating one. More on her a little bit later and more from Greece after this quick break. So I get back from that trip and I, it was pretty funny. I told anybody who would give me 10 seconds how amazing I thought Greece was, how uh, how wonderful I, I found it. It's incredibly comfortable, I thought. Um, it's for such a big city that Athens is. Center, center Athens is walkable. It's comfortable. You have so much history all around you. Everywhere you go, you come out and you see the Acropolis. Even at night, it's illuminated spectacularly. Such beautiful views. I found everything about it. So much history everywhere. And then the city glows at night. As soon as the sun goes down and all of the uh, the bars and restaurants and shopping and all of that, and the lights come up, the, the, the city glows. I absolutely loved it. I told my family, we have to make plans to go back. It took us two years. But we did, we made it back to Greece. As a family celebration for her graduation from New York University, we agreed to make the trip back to Greece. We'd spend some time in Athens, of course, but this time we'd also set aside some time for one of the Greek islands. You already know the drill with the food. They were equally as impressed as well with the views and the general vibe in Athens, but where we got a shot in the arm was our three-day trip to the islands. A six-hour ferry ride from Athens, most of which I slept with stops along the way, and we arrived at the island of Santorini, which I will say off the top features one of the most beautiful scenes I have ever seen in my life. A rather large island with a decent bus system to get around if you know how to use it. More on that later as well. The vistas are everything you see in the movies. The people, wonderfully friendly. The caldera basin, 
One morning we were there and we woke up to three cruise ships parked in the basin. I had a bartender tell me in July and August it's like a parking lot out there with five or six cruise ships easily, each with roughly 2,000 people coming up these gondolas for a peek at the town of Fida, the largest on the island. It could get pretty crowded around Fida during the day, so we took a ride up the coast to Santorini's northernmost extreme, the uber-exclusive village of Ia. Now, wouldn't you know it? So, we're walking around Ia here in Santorini, and I hear, Jesse, you're far, you're far away from home. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. Tell me your name, sir. John Thompson. John, it's a pleasure to meet you. Jesse, they live, he see and you. his wife, Penny, Thompson. Penny. Penny and John, they live in the landings. And I'm like, floored here. Like here. We watch your show all the time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How long have you been here? Uh, three days. Three days. Uh, we were in. Uh, we, we were over on the, the west side of uh, of, of Greece uh, for a week. And what? We was it different? Uh, oh yeah, a uh, lot, uh, lot different. It was. Uh, we were at Costa Navarino. We were at uh, Natuna. I think for a little time and everything. Now we're going back to Athens today. We were in Athens for a couple of days. We're going back uh, tomorrow. Have you been to Athens before? Uh, we stopped in Athens going, but now we're going back and staying overnight. It's very nice. So what do you think nice. of the food here? Uh, it's great. If you if you go to the right spots, I have a friend in Athens who showed us around to some really cool spots. So yeah, we did a, we did a tour uh, a couple of days ago, and it was wonderful. First time here in Greece? Yes. Very good. Yeah, ours here in Santorini as well. I was in Athens before. I'm 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 stumbling over myself because I'm just floored here. Anyway, well, like I told you, I heard the voice and I went. That's just. I went. Yeah, that's it. That is so crazy. Anyway, thank you for your support. Hey. Thousands of miles away. Anytime. Pleasure to meet you. You all enjoy. Always good to run into neighbors. <laughs> wow. You could have knocked me over with a feather after that. But wait, there's more. And Dealey's a Savannah-based flight attendant. She'd seen my post with Mr. and Mrs. Thompson on Facebook, but the odds of crossing paths in a city the size of Athens? Jeez. Our villa had a jacuzzi pool on the roof, and we used it for hours. Another spectacular sunset and memories to very much last a lifetime. I did make a list of places we ate and drank at in Santorini, including this spectacularly delicious moussaka a Greek lasagna using eggplant. There are three restaurants in particular, and I've written about them now. You can find it at eatitandlikeit.com. More after the break. Stay with us. My two favorite things that I ate that original week in Greece were unforgettably delicious and you can make them at home because I have. This fresh fettuccine was as light as it looks. Don't get me started about the qualities of fresh pasta. We could be here all day. The pasta was tossed, however, in a feta and olive oil mixture that was creamy but not a cream sauce. Ultimately, it was a cheese sauce, obviously, but it wasn't anything resembling an Alfredo. I've made this a couple of times since and I love it. I've seen recipes call for a little bit of Dijon for a zing, maybe some diced asparagus for a little texture, but you get the idea, this dish was amazing. The other was fairly simple, and I'd forgotten about it until I saw the photos last week. Grilled sliced mushrooms with a squeeze of some lemon juice. What they season those mushrooms with, I have no idea. I would love to know. Of course, you can make these things at home or find someone to make them for you. Elena Hughley is a Savannah-based caterer. She is of Greek descent, and all of the flavors we've been talking about, they are her specialties. Her catering operation is called Two Birds. She's been at it for a few years now, providing customers in this area with all of the flavors of Greece, including some of that feta. Let, let's zoom in on the, on the feta. Where do you get your feta here? Well, I don't. Um, I get uh, imported creamy Bulgarian feta. Don't tell my ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> um, why? Because I think that um, getting feta in the States, or that was made anywhere in the United States, is not really authentic. It's not made with 100% sheep's milk. It's cut with 
you know, cow's milk or whatever the, the situation might be. Um, there's way too much salt added. Uh, and feta cheese itself is supposed to be buttery and creamy. It's not supposed to be hard and crusty and super salty and yellowish in color. Ellen is, of course, operating in large volume, and while that may be better cheese, you do not have to go without. Part of what we were told back on that feta tour of Greece is that the easy way to determine if it is, in fact, Greek feta is to look for this symbol, very clearly stated on the packaging. It is their official seal. Next thing you know, I'm walking through Publix 12 Oaks here in Savannah, and I see this. Caught off guard? You bet because I've looked here before and I've not seen it. This is generic Publix brand feta, but you see the seal right there. It is certified legit. Now, of course, you won't find all the same items in every Publix in the area. There is some give and take, as we know, but at least now we know it exists. And with some sweet talking, you might just be able to get your hands on some or make the call to Helena. She'll take care of the rest. Um, we started out, as you know, as Elena's Enchanted Kitchen, um, but have recently rebranded. So now we are Two Birds Greek Street Food. So um, we're going to be doing pop-ups all over the city at your local farmer's markets, uh, festivals. Um, we've recently purchased a food trailer as well, so we're having that custom built so the kitchen can accommodate all of our needs. Uh, social media, you can still go to um, www.elenasenchantedkitchen.com and it'll reroute you to um, www twobirdsgreekstreetfood.com You know, all the things that I love, uh, have come to love about Greece, um, you know, I could go on and on. Our time here is, uh, is limited, so I, I got to keep it brief. But online, it doesn't have to be so much. I've written all about um, some of the things we ate, some of the places we stayed, uh, there's a list that those of you who are thinking about taking a trip to Greece, you can find it all right now at edenandlikeit.com. But I do want to share a couple of resources with you that you should absolutely consider if you are planning, whether it's this summer or in the fall or or, or next summer of, uh, of 2025, taking a trip to Greece. There are a series of videos online by a young man. His name, he tells us, is Sebastian. His, uh, his YouTube handle is Greece Explained. He's very thorough. He speaks clear English. He's very uh, accurate with everything that he explains about arrivals at airports and, and ferry, ferry uh, boats and uh, taxis and all of those things that you need to know if you go to, uh, to a foreign country. I watched them all. I was familiar with a lot of it because I had been before, but it's incredibly accurate. And I thought this guy's providing a tremendous service here on YouTube. Greece explained. And then finally, I told you I would share uh, a little bit more about my uh, friend Stammy Turner with you. Turns out, uh, as I think I mentioned a little bit ago, Stammy Turner is a Southern Belle. She is from Charleston, as I said. She's lived in Jacksonville. Her dad still lives in Greenville, South Carolina. She is from the South. Turns out we have common friends down in Florida, but that was, that was a whole other mind-blowing thing. But she is from the South. She lives in Greece, and she puts together, she owns a tour. The tour is dedicated toward taking ladies on trips around the world. A few weeks ago, she was in Vietnam with a tour group. In a few weeks, she's taking another group of ladies to London and Paris. There's, uh, I think, a trip to Ireland. There's one to Spain. I think she was talking to my wife about going to Scotland. She takes groups of ladies all over the world. You can find her at herdreamvacation.com, herdreamvacation.com. At the very least, if you have questions, she does tours of Greece as well and Athens and the whole thing. Uh, incredibly knowledgeable of so many different places and hotels and, and a great resource. Shoot her an email if you're thinking about it, or if you'd like to hire her for a day or a tour, she'll help coordinate all kinds of things. I can't say enough wonderful things about Stammy and her hospitality and how she could make someone from America feel comfortable in a country where the language barrier is uh, sometimes a little bit difficult, but she's fluent in all of it. So hit her up, do it, do it. There's a whole world out there to see. And one last thing, remember that purple shirt? Uh, I think I wore it three days in a row. It was my favorite shirt at one time. I wore it to travel and the whole thing. I got home and I threw it away about how it goes thanks so much for hanging out with us this weekend we'll see you next week for more eat it and like it eat it and like it